Rick Higgins with you here again. In this video, we're going to R&R &R, or remove and replace the transmission. And we're going to show you a lot of the things on the outside of the transmission that can be taken care of along the way. Now in another video later on, we're going to get inside the transmission and we'll show you what all those gears and synchronizers are for. Now we're going to be changing the transmission in this 68 bug. It started making a roaring noise as it's going down the road and that's a good indication it may have a bad pinion bearing or maybe even a bad ring and pinion. And that's a pretty expensive thing to fix. And so the fellow that owns this car, who's a good friend of mine, has found a good used transmission. And we checked it out to make sure it was a good one and we're going to put that in the car. Now this transmission should give you many more miles of good service for about a third of the cost of rebuilding this transmission. And that's the choice that many of you are probably going to make, and so that's why we're doing this video first. So let's get started. Now if you've got a 68 or an older Volkswagen, you're going to have the straight axle transmission. So before you even lift the car up off the ground, while the tire's still on the ground, you want to take off the rear axle nut because you're going to have to take the drum off to release the emergency brake cable. So the first thing you've got to do is take out the cotter pin. I've already got this one loose a little bit, so it might not be that easy. And then you can use a tool like this. Now this is put on here with about 250 pounds, just like the flywheel. And you can use a tool like this here that you can actually beat on it and loosen it up like that. Or you can use your 36 millimeter socket or one car here. We've got the back seat out. Now we want to go over here and take the screw out of this little inspection plate down here. Now this one was a Phillips. Usually it should be a straight screw there. You can see right here, this is where the VIN number is at on your chassis as well. Then we take this little plate off, and right down here is our coupler. Okay, we'll want to start by clipping the wire off this little safety wire here. Pull it out hang this. from the battery cable, but you could take the battery cable and the solenoid wire off and leave the starter on there. I'd rather take it off. Be sure to unhook one of your battery cables. We'll have a hex head inside them. Some of the earlier ones did. And this hex socket, this six millimeter, will fit in there, but it'll end up ruining this. So don't use it on these. You only use a, an Allen wrench like this here, six millimeter an Allen wrench, if you have an Allen head in the socket. Okay, now before you use this though, clean these out real good on the inside so that fits in there real nice and deep. That way you won't strip it out before you even get started. Yeah, we've got that off there. Now once you get that off there, you'll be able to see that the edge of the CV joint that the flange fits onto has a bigger diameter than the edge that actually goes up against the transmission or the axle shaft, the stub axle, we call it also. This is what happens when the boots get a hole in them, you get dirt and water in there. And that just grinds against those surfaces. Now we'll take a look in here. You can see right in there, I hope, that there's a hollowed out spot right in the middle of that groove, right in there. And that's what you don't want to see. It's just a little shine. Okay, now I've got both of our transmissions here together. This is our 68 transmission, the one we just took out, and this is our 66 transmission, the donor transmission. Now with the two of them together here, I'll show you the differences between the two of them. You'll see why we have to do some changing here. In 1967, Volkswagen made the stance of the Volkswagen about two inches wider in the back. And they did this by making the axles longer. Now you can really see that difference on the bug in the space right in between here. This is our 68. See if you can see that with the tape measure there. See the space there? And then if we compare that to our 66 over here, see there's about an inch difference in there. And so the 67 and 68 axles are an inch longer because of that, but the 68 axle is actually even a little bit longer yet because it had a wider brake drum in the back. Now we want to take this little plastic dish out of here. It sets up against the inside of the transmission. The axle rubs over the outside of this and keeps you from having metal to metal between there and the end of the axle tube and the transmission. Now we've got a big C-clip on the inside here that we've got to take out. And I've got a pair of needle nose pliers here that I've filed the ends, a little groove down inside here so it'll fit inside now, the there. the critical we'll... measurement that we have to worry about is on the inside 
of the fulcrum plate where it meets the axle. Now I've measured this ahead of time and it's eight thousandths on here. Actually when it was put together, the wear it was put together with about four thousandths, but you've got up to about ten thousandths for a wear limit. And at eight, we're still all right with this. But if these were different colors, they probably it wouldn't even be in this position when you took both your axles out, the two spider gears inside here would fall down against each other and then you wouldn't be able to put the axle back in. And so you can take and turn this around about 90 degrees and then you can slip the gear off to the side and then they'll stay there like that. Then the axle will go right in there and that's something you need to know because you could You want to hold that backing plate in place there until we get this tightened down pretty good so it doesn't fall down there against that O-ring because it's sitting on a little lip of its own there. And you're watching this, you can see that the paper gasket went against that O-ring. Some books will tell you to put the gasket on first and then the O-ring. Others will tell you the other way. I learned it, put the O-ring on, then the paper gasket. One way or the other, the paper gasket is going to be against one side of that O-ring now. Put our cotter pin in there. There we go. Right in there. And we're over with our pliers. Put our hub cap on, and we're all done. You've learned one more lesson on how to keep that Volkswagen alive.